the exceeds expect that was the last one Kelsey Whew. okay hello everybody my name is Kelsey and we're about to get very very nerdy with a magical wrap-up so today I thought I would finally go through all of the books that I have completed for the magical readathon the newt version which was also my August wrap up. I will leave my TBR video and the creator book roasts video down below so you guys can kind of see what that's about if you are not aware. If you do not follow her she's amazing and like I cannot praise her enough she's awesome. So this is kind of part two to the readathon. The first part was in April and that was the OWL readathon based on the OWL examinations that you would have taken if you happen to go to Hogwarts. It would have been your sixth year there. And then during your seventh year you would take the Newt examinations which are ten times harder and are based on what you passed in your OWLs. So that is what we did this time. So this is based on the classes or challenges that I completed in April and there was I think about 12 challenges in April and I completed only four classes. So for this readathon I could only do those four classes. However in this readathon each class had three different challenges and so this month I could read a total of 12 books and somehow I did it. I completed everything I was meant to complete this month with like almost a week left. I don't really know how but let's go through some theories as to why I think so. I think I planned better than I did last time. Last time I just kind of found books that fit the themes and hoped for the best. I tried to pick a bunch of different kind of mediums as well as a bunch of different ways to read these books so I could get through as many as possible. So there wasn't a time when I wasn't listening to an audiobook or wasn't reading or wasn't sitting down and reading a ebook. You know, it, I always had something that I was doing. So that I think really helped. But I'm just gonna go through all of the books I read and this is probably gonna be a super long video. So I'm going to try to get through them quickly. So for each class you had three challenges like I said and it was acceptable, exceeds expectations, and then outstanding. So let's go. The first class that I'm going to talk about today is my Muggle Studies class and the first challenge in that class is the acceptable challenge and that is just read a book by your favorite author. So I chose Leah on the Offbeat by Becky Albert. I gave this book three stars. It wasn't my favorite Becky Albertalli book. I definitely like Simon Versus and Upset of Unrequited much better than this one. It kind of felt like to me I was reading fan fiction for the series instead of kind of like a spin-off. Now there are definitely scenes that I loved and there were definitely things that happened in this that I loved but overall it wasn't my favorite. I didn't hate it and I'm glad that I read it but it was just kind of like a good meh read because I just I don't know there are scenes in here that I was like okay but like why though and I couldn't I wanted Leah to get over herself like I wanted her to just move on and stop like complaining and moaning and all of this stuff but she would always do it like in her head and I was like can you just say the things that you need to say and then everything will be okay like just oh my goodness so there was a lot that she did that I was like annoyed with and then like I felt like it wrapped up really quickly at the end but also left like a ton of loose strings. So I don't know, not my favorite Becky Albertalli. I still love Becky Albertalli and I will still read all of her books but this one is just not one of my favorites. The next book in this challenge is the Exceeds Expectations and that is just to read a biography. And so this is not really a biography, it's more of a memoir but it still counts and that is Pastrix by Nia Boltz Weber. Mia Boltzweber is a pastor out in Colorado and this is just about her life and how she has come to terms with a bunch of things. Now I listened to this on audiobook so she was actually the narrator which was awesome and I saw her in person and so I've definitely read a book by her before and so I just wanted to read this this like memoir about her life. So it was really cool reading about her and how she got to the way she was and she definitely makes you think. I really enjoyed this. She talks like she writes which is awesome. I love authors who do that. I also like listening to memoirs a lot more than just reading them because then you get the author or the person that it's about and written by you get their, them telling you their story which I think is awesome. I gave this book five out of five stars and I just I loved it. It was great. And the last in this class is the outstanding and that was to read a retelling and so I read Sense and Sensibility and Sea Monsters by Jane Austen and Ben H. Winters. Now this is not the same 
author that wrote Pride and Prejudice and Zombies, but this is the same publisher. I gave this one four stars. It's just as silly as the other one, but kind of more so. In the other one, it's literally just the author wrote zombies into Pride and Prejudice, but the story that Pride and Prejudice has in the original one that Jane Austen wrote is the same. Now, if you took the zombies out, obviously you would just have the, like the original thing. There'd be no changes to the plot. However, with this one, there's still no like big changes to the plot, but there are little things that happen in the plot that if you had just taken the sea monsters part out, it would make the plot really confusing. So like there are things that this author added. So it's a lot more science fiction-y in this one. It was very similar for a while, about halfway through the book. I still thought I was reading or listening to the same author as the first one, but it wasn't, so I was really confused. And then about halfway through, things started changing and things started getting more science fiction-y. And so I just I really enjoyed it. It was really silly. So if you're like hardcore Jane Austen all the way, nothing but Jane Austen, you won't like this book. But if you just like Jane Austen's stories and know going into it, this is going to be kind of silly, but very entertaining, then this is for you. I very much enjoyed it. It was really fun. And the main plot points were still there. They were just slightly altered to make sense in this world. But I very much enjoyed this book when I was listening to it. So the next class is the potions class and the acceptable in that class was just to read a book with a color in the title. So I picked The White Queen by Philippa Gregory. Now this one is kind of in her, it's in her Tudor England series. It's not really a series. I've talked about it before, but it's just a bunch of books that have to do with that time period. And so the first half of them have to do with what she calls the Cousins Wars. And the second part has to do with like Tudor England, like Henry VIII and all of his crazy wives and, and Anne Boleyn and all that fun stuff. But this is before that. So it's kind of cool because you're, you're, each book is about a different woman and you can read them separately. Like they're all separate stories. But if you read them together, they're all different perspectives of the same time. And so that's really cool to see. So I read, I want to say it was in July. It was sometime this summer. I read Lady of the Rivers. And so this book follows her daughter. This is Elizabeth Woodville. And they are on the Lancaster side. Her mom is like the first lady for the queen and then the Yorks come along and are like I'm going to take this throne because your king is crazy. So it's really interesting to see her mom in this book when in the last book it was in her point of view and so it's just it's really interesting to see all these different aspects of the same story. I gave this one four out of five stars. Huge fan. You can't go wrong with Philippa Gregory in my opinion if you like that time period in England or anything to do with monarchs. So I was very happy with this one. So the next challenge in this class is the Exceeds Expectations Challenge, and that is to read a book with a male as the lead character. So I've been, I read one that I've been wanting to read forever, and that is Autobiography by Christina Lauren. Now, I knew I was gonna like this book a lot when I came into it. I didn't know I would come out loving it. It was amazing. It was five out of five stars. I loved every second of it. And I did listen to the audiobook of this as well as read it. I don't know if you can see, but I have like a ton of tabs because I loved it a lot. It's kind of about like what gay means and what bisexual means with the Mormon faith and all that kind of stuff. It deals with so much, so many hard topics. And I think they did it really well. And what I liked about listening to the audiobook of it was so there's a chapter later on in this book. The main character's name is Tanner, but there is a chapter later on that is in the other boy's perspective, Sebastian. And so that section is read by somebody else. So that was really cool to kind of get that for a second. Like, oh, so this is a different person. But I also, at the very, very end of the audiobook, there was a kind of interview with the two authors. But what I didn't realize was, and I might spoil this if you haven't read it, so I will put spoilers on and then you can go away. So this book is actually the book that he turned in at the end of the book. Like what you're reading for the majority of the book is what Tanner has written. And in the last two chapters, the one where Sebastian has his thing and then kind of like the epilogue from Tanner, those things are real life. But before Sebastian's chapter, it's, it's Tanner's book that you're reading, which totally took me off guard and I would have never realized that until 
I like heard that part of the interview but it changes everything once you get to the end of it so I like not knowing that until the end and I want to read it again soon so I can kind of see that because it, oh, it was so cool because there'd be sections of his writing that he would show Sebastian and it would be identical to kind of what he just said and so you're getting hints throughout it but you don't realize it until the end I don't know oh okay no spoilers we're back from the no spoilers but this is so good I loved this book so much five out of five stars I understand now I understand the hype it's so good please 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 go read it it's just Oh. The next book is the outstanding book and that is just read a book over 360 I believe no 350 pages and this is the only book that strayed from what I had originally planned in my TBR and that is I read solo I'll put a picture of it up here because I'm totally blanking on the author's name right now which is not good so I apologize but it'll be right here this is one that I've seen in my library for a while and I've been toying with the idea of because it's written in verse it's kind of like that poetry style and I love that. I, you guys know me, I've talked about it before, I love books that are written in different medium, whether it's through emails, whether it's through texts, whether it's through verses like this. I just think it's so cool. So I thought I would try it just because, and then like I was 100 pages in and said, well, I need to fit this in my readathon somewhere. And this is where I put it. So it was definitely really good. I gave it four out of five stars. But the cool thing that I noticed that you would only get if you were listening to the audiobook of it is I think it was read by the author. I might be wrong about that. But there are parts of the book where he writes songs and so you see the lyrics of those songs. But in the audiobook, he's actually singing those songs. It's not just he's just going through the lyrics like he would any other part of the book. Like he's actually singing with a guitar and it was so cool and it was really really good and I loved the verse so I'm glad that I uh, picked it up. The next class that I participated in was the herbology class and so for the acceptable challenge you had to just read something with green in the cover. So I chose A Fantastic Beasts and Where to Find Jim. This book is maybe maybe like a hundred pages. It's crazy short and I, I was just perusing the audible one day and I saw that they had this in audiobook form, but it was read by Eddie Redman, who played Newt Scamander in the movies. So what I did was I listened to the book while I was reading it. There's a section in the very front about like the history and why things are the way that they are and why things are classified as creatures versus not creatures. But it was really cool because once we got to the creatures, you would hear sound effects from them. And it, it was just a very cool like experience overall to read them and listen to him like he was Newt's commander as well as get all of these like extra sound effects. It was just a great well-rounded experience and I just I just loved it. I think this book would have just been like a resource book because that's kind of what it is. She's written it. It's about magical things that don't exist in this world but it's written as like a resource book that you would have to read if you went to Hogwarts. I think having that experience altogether made it so much more enjoyable. So five out of five stars for sure. You can't go wrong with it, but the way that I read it I think worked really, really well. So the next challenge is the Exceed Expectations Challenge and that was just to read a book with illustrations in it. So I thought I finally get around and I read the first volume of Saga. It took me a while to get into it so I got three stars, but it was so much fun to read that obviously I've gone out and bought more. I'm on the fourth volume right now. So there's that. But I very much enjoyed this. The illustrations are absolutely great. There are some very gory situations and this is definitely an adult content warning on this book. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, you gotta go in with knowing it's gonna be weird. But I really enjoyed this and the ones that I've read since have gotten four stars so it's just amping it up each time. I got very serious Romeo and Juliet vibes from this which probably you're supposed to because they're from two different worlds that hate each other. I'm so glad I finally picked it up after having it on my shelf for months. So the next one was the outstanding challenge for this class and that was to read a book with light, air, sun, or water in the title. And this is the one that I had the hardest time finding anything for. But that is The Light We Lost by Jill Cedipolo and I gave this three stars. And I don't know if it was because I didn't love the writing. The writing wasn't my favorite. I do know that. And I don't know, I really don't know what it was, but it was a book full of missed opportunities. Like 
there's this couple, they got together, and then they were separate, and then, like, they met up, but one was married, and then they were separate, and then one was engaged, and it was, like, this story of longing, but it just ended. There was, there was nothing. It was, like, this story was their story, and then once their story ended, there were so many unanswered questions about her life that was, like, coming up, and I was like, but you can't just, you can't just end it that way. There were way too many questions as to what was gonna happen in the future. They brought, like, things up, and then were like, we're just going to bring this thing up and we're going to mention it and this is going to be a problem, but we're not gonna talk about it and we're not gonna solve this problem. It's just gonna be there. And I hated that so much. There were no solutions to anything. It just ended. And I was like, that's not how this works. It was very annoying. It's not my favorite. I enjoyed parts of it, but most of it I was just like, can we get to the end, please? Like, I'm already done with this. So three stars, it was very like middle ground for me. This is probably the most disappointing and lowest rating for this challenge. And the last class that I had to read for was The Care of Magical Creatures. And the acceptable challenge for this class was to read a book with a creature on the cover. So I chose To Kill a Kingdom by Alexander Christo. And I'm saying creature because I thought this was like a siren or an octopus on the front, so I went with it. And it turns out that's kind of what it is. The Siren Queen is basically Ursula. She's got these tentacle things. But this is a story about sirens, and it's definitely like a much darker, twisted Ariel slash Little Mermaid retelling. But I really liked it. So I think the writing of this book was really good. I very, very much enjoyed this. I kept reading it, and I kept reading it, and I couldn't put it down. And it was just, it was amazing. If you like dark retellings of The Little Mermaid, if you like The Little Mermaid, I think you'll like this one. There's tons of Little Mermaid like vibes that I get from it and little things that happen that I'm like, aha, I see what you did there. And I just, I really enjoyed this book. I couldn't put it down and I just wanted to keep reading. So I was, it was really good. It was a really good read. I gave this book five out of five. The next challenge is the Exceeds Expectations Challenge. I forgot how to speak for a second. And that was to read a book under 160 pages. So I just saw this one when I went through Target and I said, you know, why not? It's different. And that was Yesterday I Was the Moon by Nora Unar. I am probably butchered that last name. I don't know how to pronounce it at all. And I'm very, very sorry. But this is a collection of poetry. It's, I've talked about this before on my channel, but um, I liked it a lot by the amount of little tabs I have in this one. This one, five out of five stars. I adored this book. It's one of my new favorites. It is the only thing written by this author, however, out right now, and I cannot wait for a new one. She's amazing. I resonated with so many things in this book. I just want to take this book around and make everybody read it because it was so good. It was really good, five out of five stars, please. Please, please, if, you, if you've ever seen this book, read it right now. Go read it. It's so good. And the last book in this challenge, or the outstanding book in this class, was to read a book with a dragon on the cover, or in the book somewhere. And so I chose Nimona by Noelle Stevenson. This is a graphic novel that's pretty lengthy, but it's only just this one edition. I loved this book so much. I was going to give it four stars. However, during my reading of this book, I was introduced to the lovely site of Squibbed. So I went on there and I was looking through and I saw that they had an audiobook version of Nimona. And I was like, well, that's weird. How do you have an audiobook of a graphic novel? Like, how does that work? So I thought, you know, I've started this. I've read like a chapter or two already in this book. I'll listen to it and see kind of what it's like. It was amazing. I had to listen and read at the same time so I could get the full experience. It was a multicast. Every single person in this cast was a different, was a different like actor. And they had sound effects and they, they did add some lines in the audiobook to make sense for this book. And sometimes they would add some sentences and some things that would kind of explain the action that is going on that you wouldn't get if you're just listening to it. So that was really cool to see the things that were added versus weren't added but it just made the experience for reading this book or this graphic novel so much better. You got the full cast, you got the sound effects, you could flip through and see the amazing artistry that was in this book. And I just, I loved it. I did not see the ending coming at all. I was not prepared. It was so good. It was five stars. I'm so, so glad that I read this. And I'm so glad that I was able to stumble upon that audiobook so I could have that multi kind of encompassing experience because it just made it so much better. All right, so that is it for this wrap up. I read a total of 12 books this month, which is the most I have read 
I think ever, definitely this year. And they were all such good reads. This was such a fun experience. And I think it's going to be a yearly thing. So I'm very excited. It was an amazing idea. And Book Roast was awesome for thinking of it and cre creating this. And it was so much fun and I loved it. And I can't wait for the next one. And I had such a good time reading all these books. It was really good. <laughs> but with that being said, that is it for this wrap up. Let me guys know down below if you've read any of these books or what you thought of any of these books or if anything I said resonated with you. I would love to know. Also, if you participated in the Newt Readathon, let me know what you guys read down below, what your favorite, least favorite. Let me know your thoughts on what you guys read. I would love to know. Give this video a big thumbs up if you liked it already and subscribe if you're not already part of this awesome Go Rowing family we have going on over here. And I will see you guys in my next video. Bye!